So I'm using my I'm using my board, and I hope that you can somehow maximize me for all participants. But if not, then they will have to do so themselves. Um, I'm reporting on joint work with Henrik Holm from Copenhagen. Um, I am going to talk about the Q-shaped Dirac category in due course. Uh, first, let me remind you about the classic Dirac category, which is described over here uh, on this side of the board. Um, I um, have a ring A. It's got a module category mod A. And I want to explain to you how one constructs the Dirac category. Um, there's no time for motivation, but the Dirac category is home to quite a lot of, well, quite a large proportion of homological algebra as known to man. Um, so what do you do? You first consider chain complexes over mod A, and these chain complexes, they're diagrams that look like this. You've got a module homomorphism, a module homomorphism, and so on and so forth. Um, if you compose two consecutive homomorphisms, you must get zero, and that's conveniently, con conveniently summarized by that equation. <clears throat> you can imagine what a um, morphism of chain complexes might look like. So if you had a second chain complex below this one, uh, you could have a, a ladder, uh, a commuting ladder, that would be a morphism of chain complexes. And if you take chain complexes as your objects and ladders as your morphisms, then you get a category uh, here called CH of A, that stands for chains of A, chain complexes over A. Um, this is an abelian category, right? So you've got these objects inside chains A. Now on chains A, you've got a bunch of rather classic functions known as homology, um, HQ, Q is an integer, uh, say that you wanted H0, how would you compute it? Well, you would stand here in degree zero, you would take the kernel of that differential, much below the image of that differential. These morphisms are frequently referred to as differentials. Right? So kernel, much below image, and you can do this at each position. This defines homology functions. When you have homology functions, you can define so-called weak equivalences frequently also referred to as quasi-isomorphisms. So a weak equivalence is a morphism of chain complexes. So one of these ladders I was talking about before, you have a morphism of chain complexes, and you require that each homology factor sends that morphism to an isomorphism. So an obvious instance uh, where this would happen uh, would be if mu itself were an isomorphism. Uh, but there are many, many other cases, many other weak equivalences. Uh, for instance, um, if I place a single module in degree zero and zero is elsewhere, then I get a complex uh, which is weakly equivalent to each of the projected resolutions of the module I began. So there are quite a lot more weak equivalences than there are isomorphisms. Now I can define the derived category. I do the following. I start with the category chains A um, and I formally invert, I perform a formal inversion of all the weak equivalences. And this formal inversion, it's, you know, it's completely um, uh, analogous to what you do when you pass from integers to rational numbers. When you, you do that by formally inverting all non-zero integers, here I formally invert all weak equivalences. And this gives me the derived category. Um, and as I said, this is home to quite a large proportion of homological algebra of the known. Um, let me highlight two nice properties uh, of the derived category. Um, it is a triangulated category. So that's a sort of, um, to some people, I think some people think of triangulated as one of the abelian. It's no longer abelian. I lose the abelian property, but you know, enough is left that I can still uh, argue uh, in many of the same ways that I would in an abelian category. So it's triangulated and it is compactly generated by what I call here stalks of A. Um, a stalk of A would be what I got if I took A, the ring, and placed it in a single degree and put the zeros elsewhere. And that's a stalk of A. And these objects are compact generators of the category. Um, and there's an extensive theory of compactly generated triangulated categories. And um, you can say many, many, many nice things about them. 
And uh, this is extremely convenient and useful for homological algebra. Um, now let me spend uh, the other half of the talk on the Q-shaped Dirac category, uh, which is over here on the second half of the board. Um, many of the th same things um, are possible um, uh, in a more general setting, uh, as Henrik and I discussed. So what you do now is you consider a quiver with relations, and here I'm uh, calling it a self-injective quiver with relations. An example would be the quiver I've drawn here, right? So you have vertex arrow, vertex arrow, vertex arrow, and you've got the relation that b squared is zero, two consecutive arrows composed to zero. That's a self-injective quiver. And you now consider representations of such a quiver with values in mod A. So that consists of placing at each vertex an A module and placing at each arrow a homomorphism of A modules in such a way that the relation is satisfied. And I think you can see that if I take this quiver with that relation, uh, then in fact, such a representation is just a chain complex. But there are many other self-injective quivers with relations. For instance, I could consider the relation d to the n equal to zero, and then my representations would become what's known as n complexes in the literature. Or I could take a cyclic quiver with m, um, uh, m for uh, Mike, um, with n vertices, and again, uh, any relation like this, d squared equal to zero, or d to the n equal to zero would do. And then if I took representations of this thing, um, I would get um, periodic, m periodic uh, complexes or n complexes. So I take uh, a self-injective quiver with relations. Um, I take the category of representations with values in mod a, and Henry and I denote this by q comma a mod. And this is, again, an abelian category. Inside, well, on this abelian category, you've got a bunch of functors. Um, and I'm not going to define them because it's slightly technical to do so. But they depend on a vertex of the quiver and an integer, uh, well, a non-negative integer j. And if um, I took this quiver with that relation, I would just be looking at chain complexes. And then, in fact, I'd be able to use these functors to recover classic homology functors. Uh, in fact, if I set j equal to 1, I would just recover the classic homology functors, uh, albeit with a shift between this q and that q. Now I have my abelian category of representations. I have my homology functors. I can define weak equivalences. And these would be morphisms such that these homology functors send, more, send the morphism to an isomorphism for each vertex of the quiver and each value j equal to 1 and 2. It looks slightly suspect to say 1 and 2. And indeed, in this classic case where I have this quiver and that relation uh, j equal to 1 suffices. But in general, you actually need j equal to 1 and 2 for this to be a uh, useful definition of weak equivalence. And now I do the same thing that I did before. I take my abelian category and I formally invert the weak equivalences. If I started with this quiver and that relation, then I get the classic Dirac category. If instead I switch to that relation, I would get the Dirac category of n complexes as introduced by Yamakato Miyachi. If instead I switched to this quiver with that relation, I would get the Dirac category of m cyclic complexes, uh, which is frequently mentioned but never properly defined in the existing literature. But you can properly define it by using this machinery. Um, and uh, finally, to round off, this Q-shaped Dirac category, it's got the same two properties. It is triangulated, and it is compactly generated by stalks of A. A stalk of A is just A placed at one vertex and zeros elsewhere. Um, so this is a way to construct many, many, many new triangulated categories with bespoke properties 
dictated by your choice of weather because there are many, many other weathers you could choose here and therefore many other properties uh, you could you could get. So you know you can get things where sigma to the M is the identity, uh, that's what you get here, uh, but you can also dictate other properties of your category by picking the quiver um, appropriately. Thank you very much.